Kenya is one of the countries in what is now known as the African infertility belt, in quotes, that stretches across Central Africa from Tanzania to the east to Gabon to the west. This region is characterized by barrenness amid plenty to refer to the fact that infertility is often most prevalent where fertility rates are also high. Now, the stigma associated with infertility can be extreme in some countries. In most cases, a woman has to prove her womanhood through motherhood. Until then, she is a mother or nothing. Her place in marriage, precarious. In Kenya, three out of ten women risk being divorced or separated due to fertility issues. And even though infertility affects both men and women, the women often bear the emotional stigma a couples, of a couple's infertility. And TV's Yusnis Omolo sat down with women who opened up about the shame of infertility and shares their story in our special feature tonight, Cries of the Womb. What nature paints as beautiful and desirable, to others it is anything but. These are sounds that some have not been lucky to hear from their own. The coming of new life is a source of joy, laughter and celebrations. To others, it represents the fading of the dream and desire that remains just that and a cry of the womb. I've been living for a long time. I've been living for a long time. I've Sasa <laughs> Mary got married as a second wife. The first wife had already bought their husband nine children. Her duty was to add the man's brood. She and her husband wanted five. She fell short of the target. Indeed, she missed it all. And from that place of hope, she has fallen to the subject, an easy target of insults and derogatory remarks from the husband. <laughs> Dejected, abandoned and living as an internally displaced person in her own home with no access to the main family house or even the dignity of using the pit latrine. <laughs> Mary forms part of statistics from Kenya Demographic Health Survey 2014 that showed Three out of ten women in Kenya are likely to be divorced or separated due to having no child. After numerous unsuccessful visits to the hospitals, she was diagnosed with fibroids and has not been able to raise money to pay for the cost of treatment. Miles away, and in the neighboring Kakamega County, Matungu area, Nzepachi and his wife had lived for over three decades with no child. 
kaishi naye miaka 34 sio kupata naye mtoto sasa hiyo mama akasema badala kwenda kutafuta bibingine kutoka mbali wapi wacha nikwende kuletee mko wangu mkisikizana muishi na yeye kweli akaenda akaleta tukisikizana na yeye msichana huyo kweli tukasaa Mungu akasaidia tukapata watoto watakuwa watoto wangapi watatu sasa waine ndiye alikuwa alikufa naye utumbo wake As like many polygamous marriages the script did not follow as planned Sasa kuanzia hapo kitu naitwa sasa imeleta shida Walikuwa wasikizani na yeye sasa huyo Imbalika tumesema imbalika uchungu Oh sasa huyu nimeleta tena anataka kutawala hapa eh Ni hey, mtu alikuwa sasa ji... kufa hivyo nini sasa maneno mengi imeingililia hapo Things went from sima to boil with death threats looming in the village Nukuplan tafuta watu wa uwe familia hii yote yangu kweli walikuwa wanatengeza ni uwe watoto wawili na mimi na mama watu wanne lakini bado mzuri sisi kitawazurika mimi na mtoto ilikuwa tu fulani watu wakuja asubuhi tumetambaa tu hapo hivyo hiyo plan ilikuwa hivyo Research conducted by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with the United Nations Population Fund UNFPA in 2007 the national fertility rate in Kenya stood at 11.9% as the fertility rate in the country goes lower it has been increasing the infertility problem the fertility rates in our county and the country has been on the decline and i think as a country now our fertility rate is at a about 3.7 for children per, uh, per per woman which is contrary to a few years back at independence our fertility actually was about 7 uh, about 7 children at 55 years of age esther not her real name acts her back to do small house chores that ideally should have been handled by her grandchildren had she born any children Having had an ectopic pregnancy and later complications arising from not receiving proper treatment she lost her first child and her ability to conceive Yo lewa 1980 Na 81 nikapata mimba ikafika miezi 2 unusu Na nilikuwa ati nime ilikuwa ndani ya nje ya nini Ya wakaenda mmiasi wakafanya operation na hiyo operation ni kama wali nini sio na itwanga je kufuma mia ye wenye walifanya operation ni kama wali nini hawakunifanya vizuri and there her dream of ever bearing her own children vanished the couple was left with the sole consultation the new best none of the visits bore any fruit Yumzali jaribu hata wakanga tulifika tukaenda Si mkanga anakuambia tu kunywa hii dawa miezi ngapi utapata ikaisha tu hivyo. Kwa anakuambia kucha na kuku. Alafu na pesa ya kuweka kwa dawa. Ndio. Sasa naweza kuenda karibu na elfu moja. Pengine uende na 500 na kuku. Pengine mwingine useme waache leta tu pesa ya kuweka kwa dawa alafu ukipata ndo utanipea pesa fulani peanga tu madawa na nikakunywa mwingine mm. ya kuoka mm. adikad later after the ordeal the marriage turned from bliss to unbearable constantly reminded of her inability to conceive as her husband hatched a plan to ensure the continuity of his family name kafika mahali kakuwa ngumu kawa bibi mwingine wewe sasa mimi ako na watoto. Kwanza hapo maisha ikakuwa mbaya. Tena bwana akakuja akakufa. Sasa watoto wa mke mwenza kaanza kunitusi. Tena hapa mali, hakuna mali yenye utakawa. Kwa maana wewe una mtoto hapa. Vile walianza kunitusi nikaona nikatoka huko. Sasa brada yangu yakanipea mali pa kukaa the second wife became the queen
anga kikundi. Najua hata sasa mkikaa tu hivyo tena ndio watawacheka saiti, ndio? Ni lakini kuna vikundi tu ya wamama tu tunakaa tu lakini ninakwambia ukikaa unaanga furaha. She too has had to wade through the sharp jabs of stigma and taunting. Si mimi sasa kukula tu nakulala. Sina nyingine ati natamani tena mtoto ama nini hii miaka hainiruhusi. Mm. Tena bwana alikufa. Sitaki bwana ya mtu. Mkikaa na watu mtu anakuambia siki mtoto wangu usijua miaka ngapi usijua kwa kilasi fulani na wewe umenyamaza tu. So naona hiyo ni vibaya. Mki kama mko tu kwa kikundi story mtu anapika tu kwa watoto wake siku mwingine kwa university siku mwingine kwa wapi na wewe utapika story gani kweli hmm. si unanyamaza tu sasa hmm. paka wale lazima nisikie ujungu an outcast and edged out from traditional cultural norms like naming of a child after her hata mtu akikufa wewe jina yako inaenda tu hivyo uwezi itwa mtoto hmm. hizi ya yeah, wewe si toi jina lako na kwa sababu gani si wanasema pengine atakuwa kama wewe mm. yani wewe ni kuma ni kupilifu tu mm. Mm. but pengine anaweza kuwa yeye eh, maana yeye eh, hana kichwa yoyote the world health organization defines infertility as a disease of the reproductive system defined by the failure to achieve clinical pregnancy after 12 months or more of regular and protected sexual intercourse Sadly, even as the burden of infertility remains high, women still bear the brand of cause of childlessness in marriage more than men and quickly used as an arrow from the quiver of insults. Many many communities people even have names that they call people who don't have children. Uh, me I'm called uh, some people call me Lor. Lor is the barren woman. Uh, when I disagree with the people on Facebook, some people come into you know Facebook and say that's why God has not blessed you with children, that's why you are barren. Like it's a big deal about not having uh, children. Global data shows that men account for 45% of infertility issues among couples. Currently, some of the myths and challenges we are facing, especially at the county, in the region, and that which we have experienced most is... Uh, People thinking that uh, infertility is a problem of women and uh, uh, denoting it as such because it really negates the gains we've made in uh, trying to handle and, uh, and fight this problem. Infertility is caused by a number of issues among both men and women. Infertility could be due to fallopian tube damage or blockage that makes it difficult for an egg to be fertilized or for an embryo to travel to the uterus. Ovulation disorders that result in fewer or no eggs for fertilization. Uterine fibroids that are common in women over the age of 30 years. Impaired sperm production. Some other causes that will lead to infertility include poor nutrition and treated sexually transmitted infections and safe abortions could also result to fertility issues. Lifestyle diseases, substance and drug abuse for both men and women. Some studies have also shown that exposure to environmental pollutants have led to some of the cases witnessed at the moment. It is a problem in Bungoma. We are, we, are, we are seeing more and more couples coming to visit us in our clinics, in our hospitals, uh, to seek uh, remedy or to, to seek consultation or to seek help, uh, which was not there before. And the other challenge we are also seeing, the younger generation, we are, we are finding an increased uh, younger generation, uh, men of 20 to 25 years with the infertility cases and also women uh, 28 to 30, 32 years also reporting with cases of infertility. So I think the trends are changing and it is catching up even with the, with the, with the younger people. Kenya is still in the process of putting in place laws that will govern assisted reproductive process. Suba North Member of Parliament Mili Odhiambo introduced a bill in the National Assembly that seeks to address issues surrounding surrogacy, including donation of sperms and ova to childless couples. The bill has been tabled in Parliament for first reading. The reasons that I brought it is because the High Court directed the Parliament to come up with such a law because the courts were being confronted with a lot of cases of people uh, who after, you know, especially on surrogacy, somebody agrees to carry the baby, but once they carry, they love the baby, so they don't want to give it. 
and uh, biologically you find sometimes that baby is not their babies biologically. Couples with fertility issues have options and alternatives for adoption, surrogacy or in vitro fertilization among others. The latter is very costly for majority and the rest hampered by lack of clear framework to ensure its smooth flow. There are sometimes it's not even litigation that you find the surrogate mother is agreeable. But then how our system is, is that you have to then adopt the child legally, okay, yeah. which is wrong. And if the child is yours, why would I then go, have to go through a tedious adoption process? Mm. So in that case, like you see somebody like Honorable Joyce Lay, she had to go through a process of adopting her own son. And uh, I, I think you remember even when she was sharing here in parliament, she broke down because of the, the, you know, how difficult it was for her. So we don't need to get women to go through all those kind of processes. Uh, just to, in order to have a child. It should be much easier. And also to encourage women to stop stealing babies. In Kenya, the cost of IVF is estimated to be about 300,000 to 1 million Kenya shillings per IVF therapy, with up to about 350,000 per embryo transfer. Each couple is required to have an average of three cycles of treatment. One of the reasons that the IVF cost is too high is because also there is non-regulation. Right now it is going on, but it's not regulated. And also, the government facilities are not enabled by law to give IVF. So you see, if we pass the law, and I have said that we're actually encouraging every county government to set up a reproductive unit, and we'll be encouraging that every reproductive unit has an IVF center, because then it will help. It doesn't matter how few or how many uh, the women or men are that are seeking, and. Uh, one of the things that I discovered since I brought this bill is apparently so many people actually use assisted reproduction, but because of a stigma attached, people don't talk about it. In the last parliament alone, I met several male MPs and female MPs who have had children through assisted reproduction, but they can't say it because of the stigma attached to it. So if even us as leaders, we feel stigmatized in talking about it, what about ordinary people? So it would help if then we bring it closer to people so that they are able to get that sort of assistance. For now, these keep hiding from the darkest moments of their lives with some hanging on to their faith and still hopeful that their wombs will be fruitful. As a doctor, I'm concerned because um, when you have a quarter of the population not being able to conceive, then we are thinking about our future generation. And it's a problem we have to combat quite aggressively. And especially for women it, and men, it affects families by a big degree. And they are not able to be productive human beings in the society because they wonder what's wrong with me or what's wrong with my system. Childlessness in African setup is always deemed as inability to ensure continuity of a generation or a family name. Many lack the knowledge on alternatives. A number cannot access the alternatives, while many more cannot afford the alternatives. As a result, they continue living in solitude due to stigma. Eunice Omolo, NTV, Bungoma County.